Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Live. Uh, it's a beautiful day in Blackstone. And uh, sun is shining. Been getting kind of dry. I think we need some good rain. And uh, But anyway, welcome to uh, Blackstone, the center of the world. But then you too are the center of the world. And uh, last night we're getting down to the, getting close to the end of the Vietnam War. So, the uh, Nixon has been elected. They've, uh, uh, he's come up with a peace that has excluded the South Vietnamese. They were really duped. They were really cut out of the loop because uh, Nixon wanted to get out uh, and uh, they knew they were leaving the South Vietnamese hanging uh, and the South Vietnamese knew it too. So anyway, so I've been, uh, as you know, uh, if you follow me, I've been uh, engrossed in the apocalypse now as kind of like a uh, vertical, <laughs> a vertical understanding of the Vietnam War versus a, well, let's put it this way, I had this up before, but, but the Ken Burns documentary is horizontal in the sense that it's in time, real time. And by real time, it means it's a historical documentary that is progresses linearly. You can tell all the dates when things happen, right? I mean, this happened now, and then that happened then. So it's kind of like a, a domino of time. Fall time is kind of looked like that as each moment knocking down the next moment. So you got these falling dominoes of moments. And you can look back at it. You can look at it from out here, you see, and you can uh, uh, record it. And you can look at it. And you can write it down and make pictures of it and analyze it. You see, but it's all horizontal. It's all horizontally in time, in form, real time form. Or you could say the objective world. Uh, object. Everything's an object. And that's the world we think is real. Or we assume it's real. We believe it's real. And there's really no other, in our culture, there's really no other option or choice but to believe this is real. There really isn't. Uh, it's pretty much of a closed belief system that the real world totally is objective in time and in form and we can be outside of it and measure it and then argue about the facts. Uh, did it happen this time or that time? No, it didn't happen that way, it happened another way. But everyone agrees that it happened. <laughs> you may disagree on how it happened and why it happened and uh, and who's reporting it and what was left out and all that. But the fundamental assumption is that it's objective, measurable, quantitative reality. You can measure it. You can time it. You can get a stopwatch. Uh, you can, how long was it? How short? How heavy? You see, it's all quantitative reality of form and time. It's a space-time reality. And our fundamental assumption in our culture is that that is it. And if you uh, break with that, you are like Colonel Kurtz in the apocalypse. Somebody's got to go kill you. You're outside of the field. You're outside of the pale. You're beyond the pale of culture. You're a heretic. You're a threat, you see. So I think looking at the apocalypse now is this vertical dimension that is not looking at the world in external time and form, but it's looking at the world, it's looking at us as one. As one. See, this is the many. You see, when we look at it horizontally, we're looking at it as we're looking at the world as many, many objects, many moments, many all its, many, 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 many. And we just measure them and we say it's infinite. Well, there's no end to it, you see. 
but it, the fundamental assumption is that it's all the many, made up of little points, things, atoms. We can and analyze this world, you see, and we can go zoom out until we could see all the billions and billions and billions of trillions of planets. Or you can go zoom in until you see all the billion and billion trillions and trillions of atoms. And then you can go into the atoms and uh, find uh, uh, energy. I don't know, you know, they get to the point where there's nothing there. And if you keep going, expanding, zooming out, you get to the point where there's nothing there. So, not, so it seems to be this particular frame of the many seems to be bookended by nothing. <laughs> by the empty, you see. And so the, the view of the movie and the art and the prophet and the dropout, the cultural dropout, and I mean literally the cultural dropout, when you drop out of the many, you are the one. Remember the matrix? Are you the one? What is the one? The one includes the, the one is one because it has no second. So the one that has no second includes all of the many in the one. Now this is, this, this is a uh, mythical, esoteric, uh, zen, snap, snap. I, you know, say satori is a eureka, <gasps> aha. Snap, you see. That snap is when we have an insight or a realization that is a one idea, but it includes all the many. So it makes the many simple. Suddenly, you, and this is not cosmology or anything. It doesn't have to be you know, include the whole world. I mean, it could be just a family relationship. <laughs> It can be, it's very simple, it's everyday mind. When you have a snap realization that sees all of the complexity of a particular situation as one, then it's very simple. Then there's no question, there's no problem. There's no problem with the one because it has no second. The problem is in the many, when you have conflicting manys. And this is where we live today in our culture, is in this in the, uh, in the one that is many, and the many is lying to each other. And so I'll come back to the title, The Stench of Lies, and that came from the Apocalypse Now. And both our characters, uh, Willard, who was the uh, uh, hero on a mission, a journey, a hero's journey, he had a mission. He had a mission to find this rogue, this dropout, that had to be assassinated. Uh, in The Heart of Darkness, which I just got on Kindle, you can get it on Kindle for free. Um, I'm going to be reading that, but that was what the movie was taken from. But in The Heart of Darkness, the hero went to retrieve or save the uh, dropout, the, the uh, one, the exiled, uh, the rogue, or whatever. So anyway, we're getting back to the stench of lies. Now, uh, you know, I'm, so I'm trying to put together the dots. So, uh, this is what really, I, I think, as I look at myself and what, what motivates me and why I keep coming here and doing these talks and what keeps me alive and keeps me uh, uh, a, a young 80-year-old, if you say, uh, is that there is this driving passion to see the one, uh, to simplify the complex into the one. Uh, to remove the confusion and the uh, doubt and the uh, uh, complexity into single, simple ideas that oh, I, it all it all is clear. It's clarity. It's clarity when you when you uh, have a single idea, a one. It's very clear. Um, in the in the Vietnam movie. Uh, movie in Ken Burns. There were so many documentaries or, or reports or confessions or stories of the uh, of the snap 
where before the idealistic soldier went to Vietnam fighting for culture, fighting for the idea of America, fighting for culture, culture is an idea, fighting for America as an idea, the flag, God, apple pie, you know, mom, my girlfriend back home. No, no, the American idea. So that's what they were fighting for. But then there's the, when they get there, there's the sinking realization that the promise that the reality projected or believed in was not the reality being fought in. There was a disconnect. Somebody's lying. Or who is it? Is it my, my senses? Is what I feel and see in this situation where I'm burning a hut or, or killing children or bombing, just killing gooks? Uh, is that truth? Or it doesn't feel true. It goes against the heart. But then the culture, the culture idea, as expressed by the government and the president and all that, is saying, it's good. It's good to kill gooks. You're preserving America. These are the enemy. They don't agree with our idea. They, they are against our cultural idea. You see, they're communists. They're communists, so you can kill them. Because they're threatening our culture. Our and the culture is not the people, it's an idea. So we forget, you know, that what, what holds all of the data. This is just data. This is just data. I mean, when you start looking at the world, it's data. It's raw data. And that's useless. It's like a snowstorm. <laughs> it's roof brain chatter. What is... What good is all of the roof brain chatter going on in your mind? It's just thoughts. Blah, 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 blah. But then you get an idea and all of the thoughts grow still. Oh. So an idea, and they're, they're diff there's, there's ideas floating around in the mind, and this is just chatter. But then when you get an idea with a capital I, idea, idea holds all of the many together. So what I'm trying to say here is that the idea of America is a cultural idea or a world idea that holds all of the parts that is you and me and all of the states and all of the all of the data is given coherence and reality and unity by an idea. So you still have all these individuals running around, but what makes them American and not uh, 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 French or whatever, you see. So in other words, the cultural idea gives a unity and a reality to all of the different individuals held together. And America is unique because it keeps inviting new people from different cultures into our idea. So our idea of America, its original idea, is always expanding to include new ingredients, like a cook who includes new ingredients, but the ingredients assimilate to the American idea. Now, so, so, we, we seem to, well, so I, I try to look, I'm looking back over the 60s, and I'm looking back over uh, what's happened to us since then. And the stench of lies, so now getting back to this, what is this stench of lies? It's, a, it's the stench when the idea you are supposed to believe in does not agree with the boots on the ground. That the ground, what you experience, what you, what you see directly,
conflicts with the idea. Now this creates a the stench of lies. Something doesn't fit, you see. Reality, reality has to be whole. It can't be bipolar. It can't be you can look at reality with one eye. If you have a walleye, now I have a walleye. When I look to the left, I see two. But then I look to the right, and my eyes focus, and uh, you know, and now I see one. Now I see two cameras. Now I see one. And then right here in the middle, there is uh, right when I'm looking right now, there are two cameras, one above the other. But what I do is I let one eye be dominant, and I don't notice the other. Isn't that interesting? So in order to see one, a focused reality, I'm trying to notice. I make my left eye dominant and my right eye that is off becomes not dominant and I just see the left one. But then when I try to focus, I can see there's two. Well, you can get vertigo when you see two. <laughs> Whoa, you know. Which one is the real one, you know? Now you can't you can't you can't get centered when there's two realities. That's a double bind. Which one is real? Which iPod is real? The one there or the one there? They both look the same. So I have to make one dominant to keep the world one. So what happens here is that when culture idea, that's one eye, the culture eye sees the reality that is dictated to us by media and government and, and all the priests and the family and the whole thing. You know, the culture idea, America, what's real? You see, that's one eye. And then the other eye is what I actually experience, uh, kind of unfiltered by the other eye, that's separate from the other eye. Now, when these two are in focus, we have a whole, we have a culture we have what's called a healthy culture because what you experience on the ground and what the, what the uh, culture eye is telling you is real are pretty close together. And that was the 50s and before that, particularly in World War II. I mean, uh, and before that. So in other words, the, the, the American culture in the 60s began to be wall-eyed. One eye was seeing what's real through the culture eye, patriotism, go fight the war, it's your duty. And the other eye was saying, wait a minute, <laughs> this war is insane. I'm not going to go sacrifice myself to an insanity. It's a lie. It's a lie. So now the culture splits in between the two wall eyes. One sees the world, the cultural, the cultural idea, um, which is a valid eye. I'm not saying it's not a valid, it's, it's an imperative to trust the culture, it's reality. Otherwise, it just goes into anarchy. It's culture that holds the people together. It's culture that gives you an identity, a place something to achieve, value. It's all related to culture. You take a person from another culture, particularly one like a, a primitive culture or uh, any culture that's really different from ours, and you plop them down in our culture, they're very disorientated. I'm suddenly remembering the movie uh, Lost in Transition. All right, so there is a, a transitional period where the new entry has to adapt to the new culture, because their old culture is gone, you see. So anyway, what we're looking at here, as I'm looking at it, I've never thought of it this way before. I think it's a really good metaphor. So in Vietnam, you had two eyes. You had the individual eye who looked around and said, this war is shit. <laughs> and the other eye was saying, no, it's not. It's 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 uh, it's uh, truth, and you. This is your duty, and uh, don't notice what you see here. Kill the gooks, you see. The president is God. You know, uh, the president knows best. 
So this split, and so then it grows, of course, because the war kept getting bigger, and the draft was a sacrifice, like just like the Aztecs. <laughs> the Aztecs were a sacrificial culture that sacrificed themselves out of business. Remember the, Zac the Aztecs, you know, they have a big pyramid here. And uh, they would had the Wars of the Flowers, which would go out and capture young men or young people, and they would bring them up to be sacrificed and killed on top of this altar to God, and the blood would flow down the temple. But they were getting so. But the but the but it required more and more sacrifice because things they couldn't get balanced. You see, they're trying to make the world whole through sacrifice. So when the culture gets when you get the two eyes, when you get the two eyes, the culture eye seeing one thing and the individual eye seeing another. The culture is bipolar. It's wall-eyed. How do we get how do we get it back together? We need more sacrifice. That's how you do it, because sacrifice makes whole. That's what a sacrifice is. Historically, humanity has practiced sacrifice to the gods to make the culture whole, to get back in sync, to get in the zone, to get your mojo back, to act as one like a basketball team. Can't go wrong. Want the culture to act as one. I remember just a uh, I think my time is up. I didn't hear it. My time is up uh, anyway. So we'll pick this up uh, this evening if I can remember. But it's really a great metaphor, I believe. And it's going on today. The stench of lies where the culture, the government, the Trumps, the Republicans, or whatever. I don't want to Locus, focus on one thing, but, but the idea is that there is a constant ripping and tearing between what's true. Right now, they just start, now that the uh, health care is dead, uh, and the health care was those who were presenting it say it's going to do this, and everyone, and the other eye says, wait a minute, I just analyzed it and it's going to do the opposite. You say it's going to do this, you say it's going to make us whole, I say it's going to split us apart. Well, then they couldn't pass it. They couldn't make it whole. Now they got the tax plan. We're going to make the country whole through a new tax plan, and already you got the you got the other eye, the analytical eye, saying, "Well, wait a minute, it doesn't add up. It's just going to add more wealth to the top. The priests are going to get all the money. The culture priest. Who is the culture priest? Well, we don't have a theology today." theocracy, where priests run the country, like in Iran. No, we have a uh, priesthood of the wealthy and the corporate. The corporate wealth that generates huge energy through the uh, roulette wheel of the, you know, the, the uh, stock market. The investors, the capitals, the capitalists have a cultural idea. And the priests are the congressmen and the people who promote that idea. And then you have the people out here who are like the grunts in Vietnam. It doesn't add up. Why should I sacrifice myself to this idea that doesn't add up, that doesn't help me? And then you have those who are enculturated, who believe in the culture, culture right or wrong, Look at the other people as being heretics. They need to be exterminated because they're threatening the culture idea of what's, rea what's real. So this split that happened in the 60s is going on today. Anyway, that's enough for today and I'll see you uh, this evening.